Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today we're in Midtown New York City at the Ritz Plaza by Stonehenge. We're going to learn how Clickatech built a smart home solution for these luxury apartments using AWS IoT and Alexa for Business. So we're up here in apartment 16H and we're going to learn about what makes this apartment smart. I'm joined by Alexa and Elena from Clickatech. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Amit. So tell us about Clickatech. What do you do? Clickatech develops IoT solutions and products for the companies. Great. So you've worked with Stonehenge to make their apartments smart. Right? Yes, we have worked with Stonehenge, with Stonehenge for like five years, and this is the time when this pro project rolled out. So a lot of people talk about smart homes, and it's kind of a buzzword these days. And so what actually makes a home smart? What have you enabled these Stonehenge apartments to do? Yeah, so voice is actually what we have done here. It's voice control of the apartment. So basically, we are currently in the one bedroom apartment where we have uh, two rooms, right? So and each room has an AC. So we have equipped it with smart plugs that controls the AC by voice as well as humidity and temperature sensors. Plus, we have developed a set of uh, custom skills for Stonehenge especially that we can divide into residence skill and office skill. That's great. OK, so these skills that you talked about, what are they actually doing? What can a resident do when they walk into their apartment? Well, Alexa, tell Stonehenge I'm home. How lovely. Welcome back. It is 76 in the apartment. Comfortable temperature is set to 72. There are updates on two maintenance requests. Well, that's great. So I heard a few things there. I heard visitors, I heard packages, I heard maintenance. So how is that actually working? What's happening there in the back end? So basically, we are using the A for B system, so Alexa for Business. This is uh, done in order to understand in which apartment and which building are we located. Okay. Plus, uh, we had to we had an idea to give like the Stonehenge management some kind of a centralized control over the echoes that are located here. That's really cool because a lot of people, when they think of smart homes, they think of turning lights on and off. But in a modern apartment building like this, just like you said, there might be a maintenance request, there might be packages waiting for you at the doorman. It's more than just the immediate apartment, right? Yeah. So it's nice to see how you're enabling that with Alexa for Business. Another thing I was thinking, though, is Alexa just said before what the temperature and humidity was. So, you know, that data might be collected somewhere. And also in these apartments, I guess they were built before Alexa existed. So how do you actually take this apartment and make it smart? How do you turn the AC on? It might not be a smart AC. How do you collect the data in the first place? Those buildings were like created before the Alexa existed, so they have the industrial AC that would not actually be like a simple thing to replace. Yeah. So what we have done here, and what was the idea, is like to retrofit the apartment frictionless. So this is not what we wanted. So and with this smart plug, you can actually make this apartment smart in like 15 minutes. That's great. So tell us how it's built. What's in the box here? We have developed our own smart plug, so we have collected it. And uh, this is like a current sensor that actually measures the power consumption okay. of the AC unit. We're using also the ESP board, so the 32 data dev kit, so which has the free RTOS on yeah. board and connects with MQTT directly by Wi-Fi with the IoT cloud. I see over here we have what looks like another espressive board connected to a sensor. What does this do? Yeah, so this is a temperature and humidity sensor. It's also based on the ESP board okay. and the free RTOS. Okay, great. So you're collecting the, the temperature and the humidity data. You're able to turn it on and off. But these things need to connect to AWS, to the internet. Uh, is there some kind of a gateway or a hub in the apartment? This is the most interesting part, that we do not have any gateway or hubs. Okay. So all the boards were like programmed, so they are like have a firmware that connects them directly to the Stonehenge AWS IoT account. Great. So I understand how you're using the Alexa device and Alexa for Business, how you're using Amazon free RTOS, custom hardware from Espressive, and really how you've enabled this smart home from a, a hardware and a voice interaction perspective. So let's take some time now and dig into the back end, into the underlying architecture, and from a software perspective, how this is all working. Sure. Okay, so we got scrappy and we drew the architecture down here on the kitchen counter. And you're going to explain how you've built this solution in AWS, right? Yeah, sure. Great. So before we were looking at this physical device that's a custom board running Amazon Free RTOS, and it needs to connect to the cloud somehow. So 
Tell us how you connect AWS in the first place. We're sending all the data directly to AWS IoT Core, so directly to Stonehenge AWS account. Yeah, that's great. I really liked how you had that uh, sort of gatewayless architecture that used Wi-Fi to connect. Now you're using MQTT protocol um, from a security perspective. Are you doing certificate-based authentication? Yes, yes, this is certificate-based. Okay, great. So cert-based auth, MQTT, the data, whether it's temperature or humidity, if I remember right, from this device into IoT Core or power consumption. Okay, so the data gets into IoT Core. I see you've written Shadow underneath here, though. What are you doing with Shadows? Yeah, so we're using Shadow in order to have. Like decouple state of the device. Okay. So we want, of course, to have it like restore it in case we're losing, uh, you know, the unplugging the device or anything like this. So in any case it's like on and off, of course, we want to have like a s state that is preserved. So therefore, we're using like shadow to store the state. Okay, that makes sense. So if someone unplugs their smart plug for their yeah. air conditioner, it needs to remember whether the AC was on or off, for example. Yeah. Plus, in terms of things in the IoT app, IWS IoT. So yeah. we're using like registry where we store the like placement of the device, like for example, the building, the apartment, the room, and so on. Okay, so you have a device registry that stores where this device is. I mean, I guess Stonehenge has not only a lot of apartments in the Ritz Plaza here, but a lot of buildings. True. So there's a lot of possible locations for these devices. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. So we have data coming in. Uh, it's aware of sort of the, the device is aware of where it, where it is, um, and it needs to put the data somewhere so you can do something meaningful with it. So what happens to the data once it gets into AWS IoT Core? So we're using uh, rules and events with which actually we're like putting uh, data to Elasticsearch and to IoT as analytics pipes, okay. so that we could actually have yeah, as you said, to do something useful with it, and so that we could have some kind of dashboards for QuickSight and Kibana. Okay, that's interesting. So you're using the rules engine and AWS IoT to put data in both AWS IoT Analytics and Elasticsearch. Why are you using both? Yeah. So first of all, we've been thinking that we're going to like do just AWS IoT Analytics and QuickSight, but uh, you cannot have like close to real time data in there. So it actually provides you with some kind of like um, an aggregation. Yeah. So and in order to see some real-time data, like the correlation of uh, the power consumption and the temperature in yeah. the room. Yeah, so we have also added Elasticsearch and Kibana. And in there, we could have, for example, the charts that allow you to see some kind of faults that AC has. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, for example, if we see that it was like, turned on, but the power is not like going, and plus, for example, it is turned on, but the temperature is not changing. Yeah. This means that something is wrong. By using these near real-time dashboards and sort of analytics engines, you can do what we saw you do manually before. We saw us open a maintenance ticket yeah. with Alexa earlier, yeah. but this will be automatic. This was also the case. Yeah. Okay, great. So that's cool. I understand how you're doing sort of analytics aggregations, like you said, with IoT analytics, more real-time or near real-time dashboards with Elasticsearch and Kibana. Um, you also have more going on here. I see Lambda, DynamoDB. What else yeah. are you doing with the data? So we're actually like triggering Lambda in order to, to put some type of data into DynamoDB. Okay. So those are like metrics from the device. For example, like when was it turned on, turned off? Like when, when, when did the state change from one to another and so on? So, um, plus we have the RDS where we actually store all the structure of the devices and the buildings that we have here. So we're storing like organization, for example. Yeah. We're storing building. We're storing uh, apartment mm -hmm. and room. So everything is in here and this actually represents the layouts of the apartments. So because Stonehenge have different types of apartments, like um, studios, one bedroom, two bedroom, four bedroom. Sure. So and in order to have some kind of like preset layouts, so we're having this database. Well that's great. So now we've understood how we have sort of an end-to-end -end solution for the Amazon free RTOS powered devices. But there's the other piece too, there's the voice piece with Alexa for business and the Alexa devices. So why don't we have a look at that architecture next? Sure, let's go. Great. So now let's head down the road to Stonehenge's offices. We're going to talk to the president and the CTO about how they're leveraging the solution to manage their buildings and luxury apartments.
So now that we've had a chance to see the apartment, and Elena from Clickatech has shown us how at the Risk Plaza they're using AWS IoT, Alexa for Business, and some custom hardware to build a smart home solution, we've come to the Stonehenge headquarters, and I'm here with Eyal Regev, who's the president of Stonehenge NYC. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for being here. So tell us about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a private real estate company founded in the early 90s by Ofer Yardeni. The company focuses on multifamily uh, rental properties in Manhattan and in Manhattan only for now. Uh, over two and a half billion dollars of properties that we own with our capital partners. And also we are the one that are managing it with our over 200 people uh, team. So tell us about why you decided to innovate really and, and get into voice in, in real estate. Um, oftentimes with other real estate companies, I don't necessarily always associate them with innovation, but Stonehenge is different. You're innovating, you're introducing voice into your apartments. What led you to do that? So we try to be at the cutting edge of everything that happens, both because of what we hear and we talk a lot with our tenants and our team are used to talking to our tenants. Voice is something that is indeed just coming in, but we understand and we believe as well as Amazon, obviously, that this is the next thing. So as a company, how are you embracing voice for how you manage the properties or manage the, the apartments uh, under your control? If I have voice and it's available to me on my desk and it's simple and easy to use for everyone, I got it and I'll be happy to demonstrate that. For instance, I can check how many apartments are available at a particular building of ours. Alexa, ask office how many units are available at Stonehenge 86. There are four units available at Stonehenge 86. So this saves me a lot of energy and time. That's great. You know, it's great to talk to customers who are really innovating and, you know, more importantly, are really obsessing over their customers and doing everything, in your case, uh, for your tenants. So thanks for sharing the use case for the, for the demo and, and thanks really for explaining the vision of Stonehenge. So we're here now with Tom Parisi, who's the CIO, CTO of Stonehenge NYC. Thanks for joining, Tom. Pleasure, Matt. Great. So we spent some time with Elena from Clickatech this morning at the Ritz Plaza, and we saw how you're using voice in the smart home solution. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we're trying to create uh, an even more uh, unbelievable atmosphere for the tenants to have a very delightful stay with us while they are you know, using our residence as a home. So in addition to Salesforce and, of course, the smart home solution with AWS IoT and Alexa for Business that we saw with Clickatech earlier, you're using AWS more generally in your business, isn't that right? That is right. Um, so in addition to using it for our multiple web servers, we also use it for our enterprise backup and restoration. And we also do a nightly backup to a SQL instance from our back-end financial reporting system. And then we can take that data and we do some you know, secret source to it and manipulate it and put it into Salesforce so we can show it in the Einstein analytics. And that makes for a great presentation to our investors and partners. Great, so you're really embracing AWS IoT not only for the smart homes, but also for these building solutions. Yeah, correct, all around. Yeah. Mobile apps, web servers, you know. It, correct. It's, it's great to see you embracing the cloud like this. It's great to see the emphasis on analytics. And earlier today, we were talking about IoT analytics. And more generally, it, it's great to see a tech leader like yourself, a CIO, CCO, really driving innovation at a company like Stonehenge. So oh. thanks for sharing it. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.